there's a character referenced called Miss Julie, who is a therapist, and she's only mentioned one time, and don't worry about it. Okay. Miss Julie has said Dara needs to do the work of healing. Michael has witnessed his daughter after an episode, something Miss Julie will never see. Dara is without remorse or guilt. Each time he catches her, he lo she looks as though mildly surprised, even annoyed at the interruption. Discipline has never worked to put her off her perceived necessities. She has remained frustratingly healthy, normal, and every other way. Michael has considered the alternative, allowing his daughter the freedom to gorge on all the scouring crystals and talcum powder as she pleases. Instead, he fixes her lunch while she waits, crunching on ice cubes. You should help, he says. But you do it better, she says. She sighs. She flaps her lips and makes a wet, vibrating sound, the same sound she's discovered the door stoppers make when she pulls on them. He says, stop it. That's rude. She stops. I want to have my door closed, she says. Why do you always have to see what I'm doing? Michael sweeps a small pile of crumbs off the edge of the countertop into his waiting hand. They have this argument regularly. You know why, he says. He turns his back on her just as her mouth opens, wide in protest protestation. I want to ride my bike today, she says. He is ready to object when he remembers Miss Julie's autonomy plot. Fine, he says, after you eat. He secures the helmet straps underneath Dara's chin and pushes her off out of habit. She wobbles down the driveway, gaining confidence and speed as she turns out into the street. One hour, he calls after her, and counting. After cleaning up what's left of her lunch, he paces through his house, opening and closing doors, rummaging and reordering. In her bedroom, he searches through the drawers in her dresser and finds nothing unusual save for an old tube of lipstick an urgent red color he re recognizes as her mother's, scavenged, he thinks, from the depths of his closet. He tucks the tube back among Dara's underwear and socks. He sits up heavily at the foot of her bed. From there, he can see directly into his own bedroom, an exaggerated mirror image, as his bed is twice the size of hers. He wonders what he looks like in it, sleeping sometimes with his feet pointed towards the headboard so that he can keep an eye on her. Every somnolent twitch sense it sets him on edge. He readies himself to throw off the covers and give chase. She watches him, too, sitting up in her bed some nights, staring. Michael rises and straightens out the bedclothes. He makes his way downstairs. There are pictures of the girl's mother everywhere. In her absence, Michael has turned all the frames face down, their angled stands now acting as rudders, guiding dust on its endless path. His hand, lingers, his hand lingers over one of the frames, but he can't bring himself to turn it over, no more than he can get rid of it entirely. She hasn't missed anything, a life built on the rigidity of seconds and minutes. Michael checks his watch, half an hour to go. He worries over a crossword puzzle, but he does not fill in any answers. He cleans the sills of the windows in, in the living room, feeling more offended by the thick sheets of grime that are lifted away with each pass with the duster then he is relieved at the starkly clean sills underneath. Fifteen minutes. Dara should be turning back into their development, slowing her pedaling to prolong her freedom. Perhaps he'll reward her with a snack. In the kitchen, he arranges sandwich cookies on a plate and fills a glass with milk. He takes quiet interest in watching her eat. Instead of twisting the cookies apart and licking the cream, she will take careful, mincing bites around the circumference of each before biting down through layers of cookies and cream taking her time, and afterwards pressing her fingers onto the plate, rescuing any crumbs she might have missed, left finally with nothing but the glaze, the glare of glazed porcelain. It's the same with anything she does. Every action is followed through to absolute finality. He's told she behaves the same way at school, even when she was caught loitering at the chalkboard in an empty classroom, nibbling on pieces of chalk, she gathered up all the dust and licked her fingers before allowing a teacher to lead her away. Her tongue striped in shades of pastel pink and blue. Five minutes. He was unsurprised when an agent from Child Protective Services appeared at his door, armed with a firm handshake and a heavily abused clipboard. She searched through their cupboards and medicine cabinets and interviewed Dara, asking the type of leading questions often heard on television courtroom dramas, making squiggly notes on a threatening form. The school district was concerned about their liability, she told him. 
Of course he could understand, couldn't he? They were insisting on a psychological evaluation. Michael empties the package of cookies into a large freezer bag, taking one for himself before sealing the bag and replacing it in the pantry. He stands in the center of the kitchen, hands stuffed in his pockets, rocking on the balls of his feet. Two minutes. He thinks he can hear Dara clattering around in the garage, putting her bike away, breathing hard to beat the clock. Thank you.